in your book, you talk negatively, I thought, about people buying insurance on other people's lives or investing in someone else's insurance policy by taking it off their hands for a price. There's actually a multi-billion dollar industry, a secondary market in life insurance policies, and now Wall Street firms are securitizing the secondary market, doing for death bets what they did for mortgage securities. So you mean I can buy a share in a company which has bought people's life insurance policies that will pay off into the pool from which I'll get money as they die? Yes, and the sooner the people die, the better the payoff. But the people with the life insurance policies need the money, and somebody else is willing to provide it. Well, sometimes they need the money. Today, it's become such a lucrative business that some of these brokers recruit elderly wealthy people who don't even own life insurance, lend them the money to take it out, and then they flip the policy to the speculator. But what's wrong with it? All right, well, here, here's the test, the moral test, Paul. Suppose you and I were looking out the window, and we saw a guy walking kind of wobbly. We didn't know him. And we decided to place a bet as to whether how long he will live. Will he live out the month? Anything wrong with that? Is it creepy? Creepy. Morally creepy, would you say? What bothers you about it? I don't know. It's another person's life, and we're making a bet on it, but I don't see that it's... We don't put a banana peel in front of where he's walking. We don't hasten his death. Yeah, no, that would be really... Creepy. Even though you have a stake in him dying sooner, you have a, a rooting interest in him dying, dying sooner. That doesn't bother you? There are now these online death pools. They're games, gambling games. You can go online, list the 10 celebrities you think are most likely to die by the end of the year. And whoever gets the most guesses right wins the pool, death pools. What do you make of that? Morally. I'm not talking about legally, morally. That is a kind of public discourse that we have not been very good at lately in our society. We are not really engaging in our public life with big moral questions that matter. And if we don't? If we don't, we will never be able to contend as a democracy with the growing reach of markets into every sphere of life. We will not be able to decide where markets serve the public good and where they don't belong. Spain has finally asked Europe for financial help for its banks. It follows sizable bailouts for Greece, Ireland and Portugal, of course. In fact, Spanish Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy is giving a news conference right now. Uh, we'll uh, bring you the details of what he has to say later on and how he's uh, termed this bailout. Well, actually, not as a bailout, that's how he's termed it. But as politicians look at how to solve the current crisis, could greater integration be the answer? I'm joined now by the leader of the United Kingdom, Independence Party, UKIP, of course, uh, Nigel Farage, and the former mayor of London, Ken Livingstone. Very good morning to you both. I, I mean, do, do, do you both agree, Nigel? Do you do you agree that uh, European intervention or uh, eurozone intervention is is the best way forward if they want to keep the euro alive? Because that's it, madness. You know, it, it is the reinforcement of failure. The better thing to do, the braver thing to do, is to recognise that those Mediterranean countries should never have joined the euro in the first place. And that actually, by keeping everything propped up with bailout after bailout, and another one bites the dust we hear this morning with Spain, all we're doing is prolonging the misery. We've got countries here that are now trapped inside an economic prison. Youth unemployment rates over 50%, desperation, um, large-scale public protest, and unless they get out and devalue and put some stimulus back into those economies, I am fearful for the human cost, mm. let alone the economic cost in those countries. So no, let's break it up in an orderly fashion. And worth the huge collateral damage in the interim. I mean, we well, that collateral damage... Consequences of things like that. That, that, that damage is, 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 is going to happen anyway, and all we're doing is making sure that when it does come, it'll be even okay, bigger. Ha, ha, ha. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, June 13th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. The headlines will be, and links will be posted in YouTube's video description, and um, thank you for joining me. So, 
Uh, it says here EU movement of money and people can be limited. The European Commission has been providing legal advice to others who are considering possible scenarios should Greece leave the euro. So the spokesman said that legally limits could be imposed on movement of people and money across national borders within the EU if it's necessary to protect public order or public security. That's basically control over the assets. That's, that's the elites having control over their assets, which are slaves, which are you, um, in the event of basically what they're talking about, a collapse or leaving the euro. And public security, that's security of assets such as building infrastructures, banks, um, government facilities. So, Then we have U.S. stocks drop as optimism about Spain bailout fades. It says here that U.S. stocks fell following the biggest weekly rally in the S&P's 500 index this year. There's optimism over Spain's bailout plan gave way to skepticism uh, that it will succeed in halting the debt crisis. So they know it's not going to do a damn thing. But, like I said before, it's good for the banks. So, And this whole thing about the EU movement of money, people can be limited. That has to do with what's going on in Europe and the UK, talking about... Uh, possible terrorists, uh, anarchist terrorist federation striking, and uh, countries leaving the euro, such as Greece, and that could lead to these crises. So they're building up all this security infrastructure around the Olympics, and down in Italy, uh, you know, they're saying it's due to anarchists attacking nuclear scientists. So it could have to do with uh, all the same stuff, which is more economic and not uh, terrorists, but I guess it is economic terrorism, so uh, moving on here, we have Americans saw wealth plummet 40% from 2007 to 2010 says Federal Reserve, so uh, this is the uh, head of the terrorist organization, the International Economic Terrorist Organization, the Federal Reserve uh, yeah, I did notice someone uh, someone pointed out how Ron Paul never actually said, and the Fed he just says, we need to audit the Fed so, a lot of slippery stuff going on with that, but hey that's why I covered up my Ron Paul 2008 sticker and just abandoned the whole idea of statism and that and, uh, uh, you know, rallying around some leader and, you know, trying to f enforce or force my political will on other people. So, and that's what you get. You get let down, right? And the whole thing with uh, Ron Paul and, and if Obama gets reelected or something uh, around Trayvon and uh, basically Trayvon or his murderer Zimmerman get let go, that could just spark a real, you know, just a real uh, unrest. So it says here that uh, the recent recession, that's what they call it, wiped out nearly two decades of Americans' wealth, according to government data released Monday with middle-class families bearing the brunt of the decline. Of the decline. <laughs> so, you know, you have the same type of insurance companies and big banks uh, basically carrying out fraud and deception and um, risky investing, as they say. And then, uh, you know, basically they stole and siphoned off uh, wealth, two decades worth of wealth that was built up. And then what did they happen after they, they stole all that wealth? Well, they got paid to steal wealth again with all these, quote, bailouts. So it wasn't really a bailout. They got paid to steal your money. Or, I'm sorry, your wealth. Uh, moving on here. So the Fed said that the medium net worth of families plunged by 39% in just three years. And it says that puts Americans roughly on par with where they were in 1992 when gas prices were. If you can remember that far ago or long ago, it was what? <laughs> gas prices were probably about 92 cents, right? A candy bar is 50 cents instead of a dollar. So you go ahead and you can do the math and see where that puts Americans. But there's a lot of stupid Americans, you know? Those gas prices are up. I and mean, we have so much oil. There's more oil. I just read a report today. There's more oil than we need right now. People are actually scaling back because they can't afford it. And yet you'll see all these people driving pickup trucks, uh, especially in the rural areas, just you know, hauling ass, doing 90 miles an hour, burning up all that fuel. Uh, you know, I, I could probably fill up their tanks with 100 bucks plus dollars. And uh, do they need those trucks? No, they don't. So, you know, I'm not saying live in a cardboard, you know, to have those little mini, uh, uh, basically, go-karts, glorified go-karts or golf carts on the road. But, I mean, that's the mentality, right? Your disposable in income is going down as part of the engineering, as part of the economic warfare. And their way of fighting it is by buying a huge honking uh, Dodge, you know, uh, with the Hemi engine in the in the trucks and that, and saying, "Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat you. I'm gonna buy a bigger truck." But then again, these are the same types of people or groups of people. There's many groups, but this is the one group that says, "What? You know, we gotta go over there. We gotta take out Iran, blah blah blah, and, and Iraq, and 
and we got to stop terrorism and we're going to get cheap oil and the oil is going to pay for the war itself, right? Or maybe they're just listening to Obama who's saying it's absolutely clear that the economy is doing is not doing fine. And it says here, this is in response to a question Friday afternoon in the Oval Office when he backtracked somewhat on his comments. It wasn't his comments. He was reading off the teleprompter. Uh, basically, it was already decided what he was going to say based off you know, a lot of information had to put into a, a database and figure out where the public sentiment is. And so they just tell him what to say uh, based on the slave's um, attitude at that particular point in time. It says this morning, that morning, uh, the private sector is doing fine. So the private sector is doing fine, says Obama. It says here, 57 members of Congress among wealthy 1%. They disclose their assets and liabilities. And it goes on and it says that some of these members are include John Kerry, uh, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Jay Rockefeller, and Diane Feinstein. And besides John McCain, you have Harry Reid as well. It says here, endless quantitative easing or printing of money, $6 trillion and counting. Many more years of money printing from the world's big four central banks now looks destined to add to the $6 trillion already created since 2008, probably more, but it may transform the relationship between the once fiercely independent banks and the governments, right? They were fiercely independent from the governments. No, no, no. Now, it started in, what, in the late 1800s. It was the governments granting them corporate corporate status and basically enriching these, uh, these corporations of banks. So these same terrorists that helped create the problem are what? They're being looked to to stabilize the situation once more. So... Moving on, top customer under Obama, Fed's holdings of U.S. debt have jumped 452% since Obama was inaugurated in 2009. The Fed's holdings of U.S. government debt have quintupled. You know, it's like you got to work that off. And so as prices go up, you got to work harder. You got to work longer. It says here, consumer credit misses as Fed magically creates $1.5 trillion in net worth out of thin air. And 28% of federal contracts funds go to just 10 companies, all make weapon systems. So those are the other uh, types of uh, terrorists, the defense terrorists. And we know who the usual suspects are, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Boeing. They all what are top contributors uh, to presidential campaigns. So big business, postal chief, if we do nothing, we will be Greece. Well, what's going on in Greece? Greeks withdraw $1 billion a day ahead of their vote they're pulling their cash out of the banks after what oh after the government and the police told them not to in order to keep it secure from thieves like banks so talking about free markets eurozone discussed capital controls of greek exits euro says sources they said they discussed limiting the size of withdrawals from atm machines imposing border checks and introducing eurozone capital controls and in Greece, they're getting desperate. It says here, neo-Nazis threaten hospital raids against immigrants. Then we have in Argentina, uh, they're losing a third of its dollar deposits and they're reacting to foreign exchange restrictions. So there's a rush towards greenbacks started back in November and about $100 million uh, are withdrawn every day in Argentina. Moody's downgrade Spanish credit rating uh, went down three notches. Italy remains in deep recession, fueling fears the country may be next after Spain to need aid. Well, they don't need aid from the central banks that need to have their sovereignty and be free, but that's not going to happen. Now, 80% demand vote to quit EU. Then the Eurozone breakup will be more disastrous than 2008, so they want to leave, but they have to have uh, the head of the terrorists, these economists, uh, go out and say, what? Well, well it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad if we do the breakup, right? So then you have the lead terrorist of the or a terrorist organization known as the EU, Barossa, saying we need to unveil, and he's ready to unveil a political union plan, that's the United States of Europe, at the terrorist organization's next meeting. Then we have the TPP or Trans-Pacific Partnership Secrets, Obama covertly granting more power to multinational corporations. So the pact would allow these corporations operating in the United States to appeal regulations on the environment and banking that would be forced on American-owned businesses with no chances of reprieve, but these multinational corporations can appeal and be heard by an international tribunal that could overrule U.S. law. The U.S. government study says humans are national security threat to oceans and our planet, which is why the president of the world is what? Aiming to cede U.S. ocean sovereignty to the U.N. We're talking about the law of the sea treaty. These are another type of terrorist, the eco-terrorist.
And lastly, the UN seeks to tax the internet as the Vatican and Israel sign an economic agreement. Thank you.